the first example of uh, our friction problems and what you have here is you have this hundred pound what I'm going to just call brick um, with another sixty pound brick on top of it now combined the force that's being applied to the ground is hundred and sixty pounds however there is another friction that's happening because the 60 pound brick is strapped to this wall to the right hand side thus adding another uh, amount of friction and our little analysis here so all you have to do is you break them up individually and uh, analyze them separately so I'm gonna just look at this 60 pound block first and what you realize is that you have a rope that's pulling in this direction. So I don't know, just, you can call it rope, whatever. And then you have your force of, you have your friction force, which is going to be the thing that's pulling on it. So I'm just going to call it force 2. And realize that force 2 is equal to R. It's not really important for this problem but it is important that we realize that force 2 is going to equal the normal force times our friction factor which we already have both of those because we know that the weight is 60 pounds and we know that the normal force is also 60 pounds So if we calculate that on out, we find that uh, it's going to be 60 pounds times 0.7, which is going to be 42 pounds. Okay. So how, what do we do from there though? I mean, uh, can can we go on to the next block? Yeah, let's try it. I'll look at the next block. A bit longer. And basically we know that we have, remember, equal and opposite. So now the F2 force is going this direction, opposite of our pulling, P. And also we have a a friction or force one which is due to the friction between brick one and the ground well we know what force uh, two is going to equal that's 42 pounds so we know that but um, how much is actually pushing on the ground and what we realize if we look back up the top here is that um, it's not only the 100 pound brick, but it's also going to be the 60 pound brick on top of it. So really, the weight that we will see here is 160 pounds, which coincidentally, that's what our normal force will be as well. And just imagine these centered in the middle. Okay, so now that we know that, we know that force one is going to equal once again, normal force times our friction factor, which is 160 pounds times 0.5. That will equal 80 pounds. So now, if we look at the equilibrium uh, state in this, and this is just a one-dimensional problem, but if we look at the equilibrium, we know that uh, the sum of f of x is equal to zero. Thus, we know that minus p plus uh, f2 plus f1 should equal zero. Another way of writing that would be p equals f1 plus f2. Now, why are we writing it equals? And the reason is because this is what we would call our breaking point. The maximum amount of, uh, this is the maximum amount of resistance and any more force being pulled after this, after um, reaching this uh, resulting amount, you're going to find that you get movement 
and then it'll no longer be static coefficient of friction, but it'll be a kinetic one, and it'll actually move a bit quicker than you're expecting. So, anyway, let's continue on. You have P will equal your force 1, which will be 80 pounds, plus force 2, which will be 42 pounds, and that equals 122 pounds. Very good. And uh, it's, it's nothing to get stressed out about, but um, the biggest thing is drawing a picture, really getting that analysis straight, and uh, make sure that all of your uh, sigma x's and sigma y's and all these things, they all make sense, because you do not want to make um, assume that the weight on a, from a box, like in our case right here with the 100-pound box, we didn't want to just assume, okay, 100 pound box, now let's work with that and do the friction. No, you don't want to forget that 60 pounds on top. So just, I guess, what I'm trying to say is be aware and um, always draw it out. Don't be afraid to draw a big picture and take up a nice big page. That way you won't get the problem wrong and you won't kill anyone. You won't, you won't design an airplane that'll crash. So anyway, um, I'll see you guys in the next uh, video.